In elementary school, we learned about prehistory, especially about the dinosaurs. But long before the dinos, there were wonderful, soft and completely unexpected rulers in the ocean, the cephalopods. They populated the seas about 400 million years ago. Mammals appeared only 250 million years ago. The dinos and many other animals have long since become extinct. But cephalopods still rule the seven oceans. There are cephalopods from the deep sea to the surface, from the poles to the equator, and they come in many shapes and sizes. According to scientists, there exist over a thousand species. They range in size from gigantic, like this giant octopus in Canada, to minuscule small, like this pygmy squid in Indonesia, perhaps the smallest of its kind. Cephalopods are exciting animals with extraordinary characteristics, like a flexible body, Jet propulsion, tentacles that can smell and taste, a skin that readily changes color in a fraction of a second, three hearts, and multiple brains with formidable intelligence. Cephalopods once dominated the seas and did so on a large scale. Their actual presence in large numbers and their incredible diverse appearances puts other forms of life in the second place. The cephalopods survived at least five large waves of mass extinction. And at this moment they are doing particularly well during the sixth mass extinction event. Among the many cephalopod species are the octopuses, the cuttlefish, the squid, the dwarf squid and also the evocative nautilus. Most cephalopods attain the age of just one or two years, except for the nautilus, which can reach an age of around 20 years, and the very large species that can become up to five years old, not counting the deep sea species. So there is no relationship between the size of a cephalopod and its age. Those who are not strong must be smart. So the cephalopods invented ink, arms with suction cups and tentacles with hooks to protect themselves and to hunt prey. The eyes of a cephalopod are many times better than those of man. The list of defensive and cunning techniques is endless. Some are even toxic. The flamboyant cuttlefish, the blue-ringed and mototi octopus are good examples of this. Others, such as the mimic octopus, are masters of disguise and deception.
Some species protect themselves by using tools that may be natural or not. What they all have in common is that their skin enables them to change color and sometimes even shape in the blink of an eye. They use this gift as camouflage, as an alarm signal or as some form of communication. This is very important for animals that live and hunt during the day, especially to protect themselves from predators. The night active species have less need for this gift and usually maintain a constant skin color and pattern. All cephalopods are carnivores, but their hunting grounds can be very diverse. Octopuses prefer to hunt on the bottom, in burrows and in reef crevices. Cuttlefish often swim a bit above the bottom in search of prey. Bobtail squid or sepiolas are often hidden in the sandy bottom and wait patiently for an approaching prey. But they are small and therefore also a preferred food for all kinds of predatory fish. Squid, on the other hand, look for prey in the open sea, often even just below the water surface. They also often live and chase in groups and are very fast and agile whereas most other species of cephalopods are actually loners. All cephalopods have in their body a funnel structure that allows them to move quickly in all directions by pumping water through it. Most can also produce a type of black ink that is squeezed out along with water through the funnel. This deceives predators and may save them from certain death. Squeezing of ink is also widely used to mislead conspecific males during fights in the mating period. Since they have a soft body that mainly consists of muscle mass, cephalopods are a sought-after prey for various predators and they often live a hidden existence. Especially the octopuses are masters at it. Some even use tools, such as shells, bottles and even cans to protect their soft body. A coconut shell serves as a rock-hard bunker that no one can get through. Many species, such as squid and cuttlefish, have an internal shell. But other species, such as the nautilus, have an external shell. Reproduction basically proceeds in a similar way in almost all cephalopods. The males produce a special waterproof sperm package and transfer it to the females using one or two arms that are especially equipped for this purpose. Some females store these packages internally until their eggs are ready to be fertilized and to deposit them in a suitable place. Most females lay a single clutch of a large number of eggs. They usually reproduce only once in their lifetime and die after spawning or after the eggs have hatched. The different species use varying systems for depositing the eggs. The octopus oviposits in a cavity between the rocks or coral and the female build a wall of stones around this shelter. They also continue to care for the developing offspring, a form of brood care that is unique among the cephalopods. 
cuttlefish prefer to hide their eggs under stones, among seagrass, or within debris that is lying on the bottom of the sea. Sepiolas put their eggs away among the vegetation. And squid use pebbles or shells in sandy soil, or attach their eggs to objects such as a sunken tree or the ropes of buoys. The development period from egg to hatching varies strongly among the species. From three months in the octopuses to a mere six weeks in cuttlefish and squid. No matter what, observing the hatching of the little ones is a unique experience. The young octopus and squid are very small and swim directly towards the surface to start their lives among the plankton. Later, when they are larger and have survived, the young octopuses look for a suitable place on the bottom for the continuation of their life. The squid consider the white sea as their home and spend their lives just below the surface of the water. The young cuttlefish are much larger and immediately go to the sea bottom where they almost immediately start hunting and spend the rest of their lives. Animals with so much survival talent will certainly last much longer than we, the human beings on this planet, will do. And this despite the relentless and constant hunt for these remarkable animals.